You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may on Twitter the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Undefeated. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Drayden smiles. Redline smiles too, but that seems to be his default mood. Nothing to apologize for. I think we're all good here. I think we're all good here then, Xander, but no more secrets from me, okay? I'm your doctor, I need to know these things. Right, sure thing, doctor. And if you don't, I'll call up Redline. Oh no. He'll tell me everything. I'll tell him all about your terrible sleeping habits. Oh? I go to bed the way- I go to bed, go to bed way before you do. Yeah, exactly, you never hang out with me and the boys. Terrible habits both laugh at that, and I find myself laughing, too. It's nice. I don't laugh that often down here. Laughing has its consequences, though. The pain reminding me that my ribs did break just the night before. I think Drayden sees my reaction, judging from the uncomfortable look on his face. Redline stayed for a bit to chat, and Drayden had to leave for some other important doctor business, so they both left eventually. And Redline brought my phone down, so I could at least watch some, video watch some videos to pass the time when there was nothing on TV. Wish the network was better down here, though. I'm barely scraping by one bar. A day passed, enough time for my ribs to make, any, make a recovery on the proper meds. I didn't mind the silence, especially when talking, le talking leaves my chest hurting. So, that's it? All cured? Well, yes, technically. Is there a catch? So, um, yes, uh, sort of? Uh, bones are weird, Xander. He takes a pause that's long enough to make me think that was a full statement. I start to say something, but he continues. Especially with breaks like yours. It's hard to tell if it's completely fully healed. It might look clean on the x-ray, but there could still be fractures. So, it's still broken. So, I just need you to be careful, Xander. If you push yourself too far and your wounds aren't healed, you're going to open again. You'll end up right back in the hospital bed. Not that I don't like having you around, of course, but I think we, I think we all want to see you up and fighting again. I'll see what I can do. I have no idea where my next fight is, so I can't really meet, meet her out hard. Meet her out how hard I need to be training for next time. Maybe Bucky can help with that. The last fight was only about a month after my first, and I've already wasted two days recovering. I need to get moving. Just do your best. Sure. And be careful. I don't want to see you back here again. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. Right. It definitely feels weird talking, walking now. Maybe I just never paid attention to it before, but my breathing feels different. Maybe I got used to whatever fucked up position my ribs were in these last few days and just forgot about it. Maybe I've got myself thinking too hard on what breathing even feels like, and now I can't stop feeling it. Breathing, blinking, I even start to become aware of my clothes making contact with my skin. Yeah, feels weird. Shake it off, shake it off. Just want to get some lunch in me and get back to training. It's been a few days, and I'm still feeling a little raw from how that, from how that fight ended up. I had him. I could feel it. It wasn't as humiliating as a knockout, but at the same time, having to cement twice was just salt in the wound. Wouldn't have been bad if he didn't try to kill me after I already submitted. God, just thinking about that gets me angry. I need to take this out on a punching bag or something. It still hurts to breathe a bit. Maybe I need to slow down. First things first. Lunch. Ugh, Redline and his, with his gaggle of friends. I don't want to answer all the questions I'm sure they'll have. My chest already hurts from breathing. I can't imagine what talking that much will do. Stomach rumbling. I, would shut my, I should shut my brain off and wait until my body carries me to the cafeteria. There we go. I see Redline in his usual spot with his friends. The hyena is sitting upright. Looking like he wants to say something. His tail is his tail is going crazy. Every time he speaks up, someone says something louder and his voice peters out, waiting for his turn to talk. Oh, hey dude. Redline unloads all that pent up talk all that pent up talk energy onto me. I tune all of it out. So think about someone's famous sibling getting arrested? No, whatever. The rest of them continue to laugh and I ch and chat as I eat. At some point the conversation transitions to old websites they used when they were younger. Forums and video sites. Eventually, eventually, an argument breaks out over which digital pet raising website was superior. One of these guys turns to me. Oh, right, Alex. I almost forgot. What did? It's Sander. They all sort of go quiet and look at Redline for a second. Uh, okay. So, like, what's up with Bruce? I'm only halfway done with my food, so running away from this question isn't really an option. What do you mean? Why do you keep challenging him? Another one chimes in. Yeah, he did like steal your girl or something. Yeah, I'll laugh at that while I just pick up my food. We already talked about this last matchmaking day. I figured Redline would have blabbed more about it to you all already. They got me in some fucked up contract, so I have to keep fighting him. If anyone else wants to take my place, they're welcome to. I don't think they'd let you, though. They all stopped talking now, laser focused on me. The lack of attention was nice while it lasted. But, like, 
all the promo material and all the commentators too, dude. Everyone's saying that you're the one challenging Bruce. I don't really know what to say to that. I guess it connects with what Bruce was saying at the weigh-in. I'm sure I can make you stop talking real quick, kid. You must think you're cute challenging me again. Challenging you? Hey, something. Yeah, yeah, keep running your mouth. Just don't say anything stupid. One of the guys had pulled out his phone. Like, dude, check out Headkick. Headkick is an online forum for fight fans. I checked my phone, too, swiping away the missed calls from Dad and typing in the web address. Sure enough, front page, there's a video of my fight on there. Maybe don't read the comments, dude. You know how nasty some people can get. He's right, but that's not gonna stop me. How is this legal, Lamo? Lamau. Alex must have some serious problems going on in his life if he's issuing these challenges. I'll be praying for him. I mean, I mean, true, but shut the fuck up. Bruce's armbar was already deadly. I'm surprised he respected the tap. It's probably not a good look to take off some kid's arm, lol. Why is Bruce even taking the fights? Easy win, easy money. Yeah, if I had a payout as huge as Bruce's, I'd take wins as often as I can. Let the dumbass keep challenging him. These fights are goaded, lol. I know, right? People are actually bitching, Lamo, just like I just like enjoy the fight. I fought the guy I fought the guy Bruce's size in my Taekwondo class the other day and won. I don't know why Alex is losing. I feel my mood drain as I read the comments. They're just as clueless as to why this is happening to me. But they have a little more bloodlust. Scrolling down a little further, the violent comments only get more intense. Anything good? Nope. Well, some mostly delusional? Like, listen to this. Well, same. I once had to fight off two guys like Bruce, and I just kept getting back up until they stopped. These new fighters are pussies. Why issue a challenge when you can't back it up? Berlin rolled his eyes at that. Yeah, time to log off. They don't know what you, they don't know what they're talking about. He's probably right. The good's gonna come from reading more. My eyes keep scanning for comments of support. A few people cheering me on, a few saying that I need to sue the company. One even saying that Fang is exploiting its workers' safety for profit and needs to be investigated. That one has a lot of downvotes and a lot of replies. I think I'll steer clear reading those. A lot of bloodthirsty creeps on here. Like, way more than I remember there being. I guess it makes sense. I mean, that's why some fighters start in the first place, right? Ever since they regulated the hell out of football and rugby way back when, MMA was the only sport left for people that want this kind of aggression. Oh, or pro wrestling, I guess. My dad always hated watching that stuff. <laughs> hmm. Remember my dad talking about watching football with Grandpa back when he was a kid? Something about having to carry a ball to one end of the field. Was it even shaped like a ball? Every player was huge and jacked, and they just kept crashing into each other at high speeds. My dad mentioned that he wanted us kids to play it when, he, when we got old enough, but by the time he got married, they already started implementing stricter safety stuff. I read a bit into it, though. Those guys took a lot of damage to the skull. Can you believe they had kids younger than us playing that? It sounds really dangerous, but Dad said it was really popular. He also said the government went on to make it, make it a pussy sport, whatever that means, so he never bothered showing me how to play. Not that I minded, he showed me an old match, a game, a once. It just looked boring. Nobody made any progress for like half an hour. Yeah, apparently a lot of people protested when the new policies came into effect. Guess all the angry people got bored of that quick and went to watching went to watching MMA. Sounds like it. My grandpa and dad got a got us all kids into karate instead, so I guess he got something out of it. Redline keeps talking about his family history, and I ignore it and keep scrolling down the article on head kick or comments. Why is he challenging him? What's his deal, lol? Alex, dude, please stop fighting Bruce, lol. It's hard to watch. This is annoying. I've got to set the record straight. I tap the comment box and get to work. I don't know where this narrative is coming from. I didn't challenge Bruce. That that cool with you, Xander? Hmm? One second, y'all. Alright, y'all, and we're back. Okay. Alright, sorry about that. Just had to reply to someone. Okay, let's see. I got, I've gotten so into the comment section that I hadn't been listening in on the rest of the conversation. The guys and I were going to head up to our room and play some games. You should come. That room is barely big enough to fit myself in Redline. I don't know if it, I'm too keen on having five of the guys crowding around in there. I think I'll pass. I need to get working out. Redline frowned at that. I thought Drayden said you should be taking it easy. I am. Just some light stuff to get back into it. I don't need Redline telling me what to do. He lets out a little whine, but ends up smiling. If you say so. Need a spotter? Nope. That's the right answer, because you're only going to do light stuff. That would have been my answer regardless, but but I'm glad I passed this little pop quiz. Redline, Redline's gang heads out while I take my tray to the collection area. Cafeteria is kind of emptying out at this point. wonder what time it is. I pull up my phone and... It seems I accidentally posted my comment. Must have bumped it in my pocket sometime. There's a lot of replies. I feel my stomach turning slowly. Anxiety rising up. Maybe I shouldn't have said something publicly about my contract. Shit, yeah, when I put it like that, obviously I can't find the delete button fast enough. The tap of a few buttons, the comment is gone. The replies are still piling up. Can't seem to delete those. 
Ugh, I'm just gonna shut my phone off and get to work. I gotta get out of the cafeteria and hurry past Redline's friends. I don't want to get caught up trying to get my gym clothes with everyone else in the room. Ah, new clothes. Nothing more refreshing than a fresh change, even if these are about to get soaked in sweat. My last clean pair, too. I'll have to find, find time to peel away from the others and get a load or two done. The machines are usually more free in the evening, so I'll head down later tonight. Four washing machines for this whole floor, but only three of them work. Kind of ridiculous. Whatever, I need to get back on track. My legs have been aching that whole time in the med bay. As good of a time as any to get them moving. A few deep stretches and a hop on the treadmill. Start it up slow, pop the earbuds in, and... Bliss. No red line, no Bruce, just me and my music. It was a lot like when I got my own place all those years back. The apartment complex had some semblance of a workout room in the basement. It was old and honestly kind of creepy, so nobody really went down there. Thank God, too, there were only two treadmills and a little dumbbell rack with half the weights missing. I couldn't really afford MMA classes and a gym membership at the same time, so I had to take advantage of whatever they provided. Plus, with school and work, I had my schedule full up anyways. Just me and my treadmill and my music. God, I still had that old MP3 player. I wonder if that's still kicking around somewhere. Thankfully, things got easier after I graduated. Mom and Dad wanted me to at least get my GED so I can at least cross it off their list. Finally saved up for a proper smartphone. Work was work was down the street from home and the gym was the same distance in the opposite direction, so I didn't have a car to sink money into. Living in the bad part of town has its perks, I suppose. The apartment was cheap and it was held together with toothpicks and duct tape. Being down here doesn't seem so, but seem too bad, all things considered. But my apartment at least got hot water regularly and I had less battle damage back then. I open my eyes to adjust the treadmill a bit, and out of the corner of my eyes, I see Bruce and his gaggle of friends off in the corner. Yeah, just don't make eye contact with me. He turns around and our eyes meet. God damn it. Bruce doesn't seem phased, though, just moving to the bench to press, press the spot one of the other big guys. I must have it easy. No one's trying to fuck with him. Hell, I bet no one would even bother him on the streets. But if I looked like that, I'd have a much easier time. Doubt anyone would ever want to get near me. Okay, maybe he is a little bit scary. My neighbors back home wouldn't even look at me if that were the case. Miss Oliver next door always needed, always needed help getting her holiday decorations moved in and out of the storage, like four times a year. I remember her knocking on my door, like a week after I moved in, asking if I could help her move some crates. If it looked like Bruce, she probably would have steered clear. I don't know if anyone else on our floor even gave her the time of day. hope she's doing okay. I remember she baked me some cookies as thanks, but I had to turn them down. Diet and all that. She kept trying different healthy alternatives after that, after that whenever I came by to help out. I guess it wasn't so bad up there, even if I was broke as hell. I'd rather be broke than living with mom and dad. The phone's call stopped in my music, so I just can't so I just can't ignore it. I learn from my last mistake and look at who's calling me before yelling at them. Unknown number. Better than the alternative, I suppose. Maybe Drayden's calling me to remind me of something. I accept the call. Hello? A familiar squeaky voice chimes over the phone. Alex, I apologize for interrupting your time on the treadmill, but I need you to please report to the commissioner's office immediately. Oh, uh, okay, should I change or the call disconnects. He didn't even tell me where the office is. Oh! Maybe this is a chance to talk about my contract. Did Drayden finally get in touch, or maybe Bucky reached out? I stepped down off the treadmill, wrapping my earbuds up and shoving them in my pocket. Bruce is still with his buds, laughing as one of them is struggling to lift the barbell. Gotta ignore that and head out. Fresh out of the gym and the lack of sweat in the air is just as refreshing as always. The two large men in suits standing on either side of the door was new, though. Alex? Ugh. Yeah. Follow us. I guess that solves how I'm going to find the commissioner's office. They start moving without waiting for a response, and I follow. These men, I assume, are the commissioner's bodyguards? They certainly look the role, though the sunglasses are probably unnecessary underground, even if it does add to the look. On the left is an elephant, on the right is a rhino. Both about as big as Bruce, dressed up in some business outfits, some business suits that probably cost more than I make in a decade. Silent, too. Fine by me, but it's getting weird looks from anyone walking down the hall, seeing me surrounded by these two. They take me down toward the med bay, and then through the corridors leading to the arena. Or at least that's what I was thinking. With the rhino leading the way and the elephant behind, we took a much shorter path to a much more ornate-looking door. The rhino wraps against it, and then both of them move, move to either side of the door, returning to their post, I suppose. After a second, the door opens inward. It's pretty dark inside. I move in anyway. Oh. There, behind his desk, stands the commissioner, I think. The door slams shut behind me, enveloping us in darkness. The only light coming from the giant glass window looking out over the arena. He stands there, silent for a moment, turned away from me with his hands behind his back. It's almost too quiet in here, and I can hear myself breathing. Hello, Alex. The tension cuts. Can tension cuts cleft down the middle. That deep timber shakes my core, enough to make me enough to make me take a sharp breath and straighten up. 
I wait for a moment, the silence lingering, before realizing he's waiting for me to speak. Ha! Uh, huh. My throat runs dry. I swallow and try again. Hello, uh, Commissioner? Correct. I was hoping I could talk about the matchmaking sin. It's my understanding that you have broken your contract. What? Earlier today, you made a comment on an online forum. My blood runs cold. That was... In said comment, you revealed details of your Fang contract, which is to remain confidential to those outside the League. There's another pause. Is this correct? He won't even turn to look at me. My breathing gets heavy. I said that I wasn't trying to challenge Bruce. I didn't mean... That's all I needed to hear. I deleted the comment right after. He continues if I didn't say anything. Surely you understand the stir... The stir this has caused within the community of fans Fang has acquired, not to mention the sponsorships funding the League. But if I just... Questions going unanswered. Rumors spreading. It's not the type of reputation we try to garner here. Thankfully, the problem has been handled. Our PR team is taking care of everything. As you are fully aware, revealing confidential information outside of the League is considered a breach of contract and is grounds for termination, along with its associated fines. But... But... In lieu of your current circumstances, this breach will be overlooked, so long as you continue performing your obligations. I finally catch a bit of breath to take my turn. My current circumstances? That's what I wanted to talk about. He holds up a hand as if to silence me. His voice is louder, more firm this time. Your job is to fight the matches that are given to you. If you are refusing to, if you are refusing to fight that, too, is grounds for termination. I try to speak, but he continues. I suggest you keep your chin down and continue your training. If you are unable to do that, then I am, then I am unsure if you are fit to continue in the Fang League. If this sort of slip-up happens again, there will be consequences. And we'd hate for you to lose this opportunity at Fang. He turns his head, one eye leering at me. Am I understood, Alex? I straighten up, my breathing, my breath catching itself in my throat. His paralyzing gaze holds me in place until his business is finished. Yes. Oof. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Damn. Oh, man. Yeah, he really shouldn't have made that comment. <laughs> I, I knew that was gonna cause problems. He could have gotten himself out of that situation, probably. Without, if he had, if he had just gone to the, if he had just been able to get, like, a meeting with the commissioner, he probably would have been able to have, uh, you know, maybe altered his contract a little bit. Ah, who knows. Anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!